first of all, tell me about why you felt the need to make it public and, and what your own reaction to it was. Well, I was completely exasperated, that's the word I've used, because uh, I, being a member of the Charter Group, being a member of uh, the Islands Association, you know, we're the opposition, we're seen to be the opposition, which is complete nonsense, absolute nonsense. Uh, we're accused of being factualising in the States, and here is a patent example, and you couldn't get a clear-cut example, disclosed by accident, of somebody seeking to do exactly that. Is that, though, if, if, if Charter 18 or the Honours Association are accused of, of creating a faction and being the opposition, would this not then be the response to that opposition? This is just a case of you being treated as the opposition. Well, who selects us as the opposition? Who says we're the opposition? Because there were 19 members, including the two orderly reps, who didn't receive a copy of this uh, email. Who's deciding we're the opposition? Where's the line drawn? And uh, if you're wanting consensus, you should speak to, or give the opportunity to speak to all 40. Some people couldn't attend for whatever reason, I'm sure, uh, so that you can try and reach consensus. That makes good sense. Sit round in a table, in a room somewhere, and say, we've got these coming up. What are the views? What do you think, folks? There are going to be occasions where politicians will meet, and they're not going to meet as the entire state's ahead of a state's meeting to talk about things that are coming up. Why is this different? Because, in particular, of the phrase about uh, the opportunity or the chance to make mischief. Now, that can only mean to any sensible person on, a, on an objective consideration of that, that the people to whom the email is not copied have mischief possibly in their hearts and in their minds, which I can speak for me and I'm sure for many others is absolute nonsense. Deputy St. Pierre would say that this is an example of precisely that kind of mischief and actually that you're, you're, you're feigning your indignation to score political points. Completely untrue. Completely untrue. I'm consistent with the way that I voted on the 11 plus. I paid for some of my children to go to school, but I didn't vote against people having the opportunity to go to 11 plus. I followed the state strategic and corporate plan. I didn't bring a lengthy policy letter on assisted dying, which would have, if it had been successful, would have knocked the strategic and corporate plan's uh, uh, capabilities and responsibilities into a cocked hat. Uh, with Islanders Association, all our members, all our meetings are public. It's known who we are in the charter group. We are open. So it's a bit like uh, somebody who smacks you around the head when you actually come around and say, ow, I'm going to tell the teacher, saying, well, it's terrible, that's why I smacked you around the head. So um, with considerable respect to Deputy Superior, who I have much respect for, uh, he's spoken nonsense. You two, there is a history, I suppose, between you in, in just within the state's in term. You, you both went for the top job at the very so beginning well, of the states. So well. Okay, fine. That's, that's, there have been other clashes between you and at least Policy and Resources, the committee he chairs, when you stood down from economic development would yep. be, be another example. What is your personal relationship with him like? Well, I just thought, you know, I, I like him. We're not what warm bosom pals. We don't embrace each other openly, figuratively or literally where we meet. But no, I think he's a good man and he's well-intentioned. Uh, but I think he's misguided in this regard. What do you think he should do? Well, I just said he sh he's been seriously undermined. I'm not suggesting he resigns. That's a matter for him.